Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to this lecture on transition metal organometallic chemistry from principles to applications. In our previous lecture, we have been dwelling upon a very interesting topic on transition metal parfluoroalkyl sigma complexes. These complexes are designated by the type as shown here. and they are involved in some kind of sigma interaction with the transition metals. These complexes we have discussed show extra stability as compared to the corresponding transition metal sigma alkyl complexes more stable as compared to transition metal sigma alkyl complexes which are designated by R H sigma T M. Also what we saw is that these complexes show dif different reactivity as a result of reversal of polarity. with regard to this uh, transition metal sigma alkyl complexes. So, because of this reversal of polarity the reactions which would happen naturally for transition metal sigma alkyl complexes does not occur or go the opposite way for transition metal parfluoroalkyl complexes. So, that leads to a very interesting complementary comparison between these two types of complexes which are both of sigma types, but they show very different reactivity and property as well as their stability. So, with that we have looked into various methods available for preparation of these transition metal parfluoroalkyl complexes and one uh, the one or two methods that we have discussed involved replacing a fluoride anion with a metallate anion and in the process making this transition metal parfluoroalkyl complexes. So, in this lecture we are going to discuss some more interesting synthetic routes for preparation of this transition metal parfluoroalkyl sigma complexes. The first and the most common one is the method of oxidative addition. Parfluoroalkyl iodide can be oxidatively added against a low valent metal center for example, iron pentacarbonyl giving the oxidably added product plus CO. So, here the iron is in zero oxidation state and it is a 18 valence electron compound. After oxidative addition as expected the iron is in plus 2 oxidation state and it is also a 18 valence electron compound. Actually it loses us 
CO to become coordinatively unsaturated to give 16 valence electron compounds which then oxidatively add to give the resulting CO4 Fe RFI 18 valence electron compound. As discussed in our earlier lecture that the there is a reversal of polarity in this RF bond. And that RF side is carbon ionic whereas iodide side is carbocationic. This is very different from any alkyl iodide where the iodide side would be carb uh, negatively charged and the carbon side would be cationic in nature. So, we see that there is a reversal of polarity for this perfluoroalkyl type of compounds and that have been used successfully in preparing this perfluoroalkyl trans transition metal sigma alkyl complexes through this method of oxidative addition. Another method that exists is called oxidative cyclo addition. And this involves addition of an olefin of perfluoroalkyl compound resulting in a metal cycle of the type shown. So, here too is this low valent iron center reacting with two molecules of C 2 F 4 perfluoroethylene giving this four five membered metal cycle Here the oxygen state of iron is in plus 2 and it also has 18 valence electron whereas in the starting precursor iron is in low valent 0 oxygen state and having a 18 valence electron configuration. Now, in the process of oxidative addition, the iron initially like in the previous example releases a CO to become coordinatively unsaturated which then adds undergoes this oxidative cycloaddition with two molecules of C2H4 resulting in this alkyl cycloalkyl iron compound as shown over here. So, these two oxidative addition reactions are kind of related in terms of the fact that the iron center increases its oxidation state by plus 2 and one involves just the oxidative addition of an perfluorohalide, alkyl halide and in the other case it is a perfluoroalkene, two molecule of this reacting to give the compound. Another interesting reaction involves insertion of this perfluoroalkene into metal metal bonds.
and this is given by the reaction C cobalt dicobalt octocarbonyl reacting with perfluoroethylene giving CO4 cobalt CF2 CF2 cobalt CO4 So, here is similar to any other insertion reaction of the corresponding alkene where the alkene insertion into a metal metal bond has occurred and the similar path strategy has been successfully employed in preparing this perfluoroalkyl bimetallic cobalt uh, compound as shown over here. Now, we had looked at various kinds of activation reactions particularly from the utility point of view. We started with CH activation and saw that CH activation was an important reaction leading to various functionalization products which has which would produced value added chemicals from simple hydrocarbons. And what we saw is that CH activation was quite challenging as a result of very high CH bond energy. The bond was very difficult to break and the CH bond energy was around 410 kilojoule per mole and the challenge as mentioned for CH bond activation had been had been because of high bond energy plus to achieve selectivity. So, what we saw that CH bond activation was quite challenging primarily because of its high bond energy as well as of its very high ubiquitous nature that selectivity becomes the issue. Following that we have looked into CC bond activation and what we found that CC bond is even more difficult to activate despite the fact that CC bond is somewhat easier to cleave. Uh, CC bond energy is around 350 kilojoules per mole as opposed to 410 but CC bond activation is more challenging because of steric unapproachability leading to the pre coordination complex required for initiating the activation reaction is becomes even more difficult. So, what we saw that even though the CC bond energy was slightly lower than that of CH bond energy, its activation was even more challenging because 
these bonds are deeply buried, they are outnumbered by CH bonds. As a result, the pre-coordination complex required for initiating the activation reaction is becomes even more difficult and CC bond activations thus becomes more challenging than CH bond activation. And what we saw that the, the examples which had CC bond activation had to do with release of ring strain in the substrate arise, resulting in CC bond activation and hence it is more difficult. Now when this in, in the context of these two when we look at CH CF bond activation it becomes on the more challenging primarily because CF bond energy is the uh, uh, strongest and it, it is way higher than C, C and CH and it can vary between 400 to 500 kilojoule per mole and that is extremely high as compared to CC and CH which makes CF bond activation very extremely challenging so this sort of gives a overall picture that if one goes down the group ch to cc to cf difficulty in bond activation increases as one goes down the group and that primarily for cf is due to the very high CF bond energy which lies between 450 to 500 kilojoules per mole and are way higher than that of CH, CC and CH bond energies as shown over here. Now that being the fact that CF bonds are difficult to activate there are very 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 many strategies in place which facilitate CF bond activations. These are very clever approaches which circumvents this barrier of very high CF bond energy that uh, uh, makes the CF activation very difficult. And one such strategy that is in place is achieving CF bond activation by electron transfer pathway. This is illustrated in the following exam example. For example, for this perfluoroalkyl compound RFCF3 to which an electron is added to produce this radical anion. This is a radical anion and hence unstable and it releases a fluoride anion to give RF C F2 dot radical and and anion F minus. So, in the process one what one sees that the C F bond in this R F C F 3 has been cleaved to C F 2 and F. So, that is how the activation has been achieved an activation has been achieved by addition of an electron uh, uh, resulting in the formation of an unstable radical anion and the radical anion 
stabilizes itself by decompose, decomposing from its radical anion state to give a radical species and anionic species as shown here thereby achieving this CF bond activation. So, apart from supply of electron sometimes electro organometallic species also helps achieve CF activation through coordination. I will illustrate this with an example. Electron poor or electron deficient organometallic species forms CF M coordination to facilitate CF activation and this is illustrated by this candium complex CP star 2 scandium hydride reacting with this olefin HFC C H2 to give this compound CP star 2 scandium interacting with fluorine of this alkene that finally results in the formation of CP star 2 scandium fluoride and ethylene. Here too what one observes is that this fluorine is sort of abstracted by this electron deficient species scandium and interchanged with the hydrogen which scandium had leading to this CF bond activation. So, reviewing the methods available for activating CF bond, what one sees that the successful strategy involves either donation of electron resulting in an unstable radical anion species which thereby stabilizes by undergoing CF bond activation or by achieving CF bond oxidation by coordination with uh, electron deficient transition metals and this can be also achieved by increased reactivity of transition metal perfluoroalkyl moiety. For example, in this example CF activation achieved by increased reactivity of transition metal RF moiety. This is an ex interesting example in which a CP star tricarbonyl molybdenum CF3 compound when treated with Me3 Si O SO2 CF3 gives the eliminates the Me 3 Si F molecule which abstracts this 
fluorine from one of the CF3 molecule by the silicon cation that is coming from Me3 SiO moiety and that results in this interesting CP star tricarbonyl molybdenum CF2 difluorocarbene complex with this SO3 CF3 minus anion and this anion is derived from this part of the reagent. Now, this is a very interesting reaction whereby by using TMS triflate one can abstract the fluoride from a transition metal perfluoroalkyl residue giving rise to CH activation. The driving force for this reaction is twofold. First, from the formation of strong MOCF2 moiety, where you see a double bond of MOCF2 formed, and second thing is formation of strong SIF bond, which is in this. So, with this I would like to review what we have discussed in today's lecture. We have looked into various synthetic protocols available for preparing transition metal perfluoroalkyl complexes which mainly include oxidative addition reactions and oxidative cyclization reactions. We have also looked at CF activation in the perspective of CH and CC activations owing to very high bond energy of CF bonds which can vary from 450 to 500 kilojoules per mole and are by far more higher energy than that of the bond energies of CH and CC bonds. CF bond activations are extremely challenging to achieve. However, we have also seen that few successful strategies that are put in place to achieve CF bond activation which involved electron transfer pathway resulting in uh, anion radical which led to CF bond activation. We have also seen coordination or fluoride abstraction with uh, uh, electron deficient transition metal complexes resulting in CF bond activation. And lastly in this example we have seen that CF activation by increased reactivity of transition metal perfluoroalkyl complexes. With this I conclude today's lecture and look forward to being, you, being with you in the next lecture where we are going to discuss some more reactivity pattern of uh, CF. Uh, bond activation reactions and that of perfluoroalkyl transition metal complexes. Till then goodbye and see you in the next lecture. Thank you.